This is a story, a fantastically true story, from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Citizen, communist, counter-spy. And who has now revealed for the first time his secret files concerning not only his own activities, but also the current activities of other espionage agents. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. This week, Herbert Philbrick brings you the story of a counter-spy who learned that murder could be a welcome ally of the communist conspiracy. Conspiracy is world, and nowhere has the struggle been more fierce than in Western Germany. like these we don't get often. No, we don't, Comrade Roach. And we must make the most of them. Well, I imagine our comrades in West Germany are doing just that. They're trying. This airman was stationed at the construction site of an important new air base. Now, final agreements with the West German government on it haven't been signed yet. Now, if this incident can be used to stir up enough anger among the local Germans... Yeah, then the air base would have to be moved with a consequent loss of money, time, and military striking power. You have an excellent grasp of the situation. I'm particularly pleased because you're going to help exploit it. Well, good. How? Oh. By flying to West Germany. To West Germany? When? Immediately. You receive instructions when you get there. Well, in that case, you better drive me home. I've got a lot of things to attend to. That won't be necessary. I told you to bring your passport. It's in order, isn't it? Yeah. Fine. Everything else, tickets, baggage, contact instructions, will be in a locker at the airport. I'll drive you. Yeah, but look. I gotta talk to my boss. I, I certainly gotta talk to Eva. We'll take care of everything. Will you let her know where I am? Of course not. Your whereabouts will remain a secret to everyone except the party. We'll tell your wife that you're safe on party business. It's a good thing she's a member of the party. Some wives wouldn't understand. West Germany, Philbrick. And no chance to say goodbye to Eva or the kids or to Warren Dressler or anybody at the FBI. You're on your own with the fate of an airbase at stake. said 114 Königstrasse, an architect's office. Wish it were the FBI and not the German wing of the Communist Party. Oh, I was looking for the chief architect. I'm the chief architect. Come in. Oh, thank you. What can I do for you? I was interested in having a building design, 14 stories high, circular in appearance, and with a recreation area on top. And what kind of offices will the building contain? Executive offices, all 14 floors. Welcome, Comrade Gilbert. Well, I'm surprised to meet a woman. In Germany, the necessities of war gave special training to many women, in many fields. Our headquarters in America was extremely enthusiastic about the possibilities here. They should be. Never was there anything better made to order for us. Sit down. Thank you. Tell me, was Andrews framed? Why do you ask that? 
Well, because the incident was so perfect for stirring up anti-American feeling. You know, the victim, an old cab driver with hundreds of friends, the killer, an American airman, it all just seems too pat. Seems that way. But actually, it was a lucky set of coincidences. We took advantage of them. What have you accomplished so far? I'll show you. This is what we've done, Tilbrick. We've managed to get posters all over the city, and the pamphlets have gone to a select list. You read German? Yeah. Enough to see that these headlines are calling for the death penalty for Andrews. A reflection of the feeling we've helped to stir up. Now, the job for which you were sent here, you're to write us a pamphlet and several newspaper articles in which you prove, through your knowledge of the American scene, that Dick Andrews is typical of the young killers trained in post-war America. Uh-huh. With the thought that there'll be more killings if the air bases aren't moved out of here. I see they sent a capable man. His credentials will identify you as an American journalist. You can go anywhere with them. Give a room at the whole thing. Typewriter, everything. It's three blocks north past the park. All right. I'll be in touch with you after I've gotten a little work done. you. What took you so long? I had to be careful, Herb. These German commies don't know you and they're not taking any chances. You're being tailed, you know. I didn't want to go to your hotel room for fear they'd hidden the mic in there. That's why I slipped a note under your door asking to meet me here. How'd you know I was in Germany? We've been tailing Roach on an espionage case. We knew he bought a ticket for here and didn't use it. We knew you saw him. Put the two things together. Well, this is out of bounds for the FBI, isn't it? Yeah, but this is not official. Just the thought that maybe if I was here, I could help him some way. Did you get to talk to Eva? Yeah. She feels better, too, knowing that you're not altogether alone, so to speak. Well, I've got news for you, so do I. What do you know about this Andrews? Only that he looks guilty. What am I going to do, Joe? They've got me writing this hate America stuff. And if this kid really turns out to be a murderer... I know. It looks like the commies are holding all the cards, except now we've got one, too. What's that? You're here, on the inside. Maybe now we'll get a break. Hmm. Look, you're a newspaper man. You should recognize the truth when you hear it. I try to. I try to. Well, believe me, I didn't kill that cab driver. I didn't. Where's your gun? It's missing. I don't know where it is. But it wasn't me that fired it. All the evidence is against you, Andrews. Look, let me tell you again. Somebody's got to listen. I heard a fight in the freight yards, and I went to investigate. I was on duty. I was supposed to do that. These two men were struggling, and I tried to break it up. I got hit hard on the head, and I don't remember anything else until I was in this cell. But what happened to your pistol? I don't know what happened to it. The guy who slugged me, he probably got it. Be nice if you had some evidence to support that. How can I get any evidence in here? I've never been in any trouble before in my life. Why would I kill that poor old guy? My tour of duty's practically up. My wife and little boy are waiting for me back in the States. All I want to do is get back to them. Have you spoken to the base provo marshal? Sure. And the legal officer and the CO. But that German police lieutenant who arrested me, I guess he told his story better. Who was he? Lieutenant Kurt Muller. At your service. Glad to know you. I heard you were down here. I thought I should meet you. And how are you today? The same as yesterday. The same as the day before. 
This fellow's attitude will not help you at your trial. Shall we go to my office? Yeah, fine. Keep your chin up, Andrews. You never can tell what's going to happen. I've been talking to all the American journalists after they see Andrews. I also like to know what they say to him. Have a seat. Thank you. I make certain that they report the truth and not a biased version of it. Well, that's a good idea. The tendency in these cases is always to become nationalistic, to side with Andrews just because he's an American. You understand these matters very well, comrade. Comrade. Wanda would have told you, only she wanted a sample of your work first. She said the material you did for her was excellent. Well, I'm glad, but how in the world did you get this job? It took years of planning. I don't mind telling you that my position is unique in West Germany. Must have taken some pretty careful planning, too, to set up this murder so that it appears that Andrews committed it. That's a funny thing. We didn't set it up. It just happened. We just happened to be there. It's the right time. All we need to complete the case against him is his revolver. It would be disastrous if it should show up, and it could be proven that his pistol didn't fire the shot. Or if someone else has it and has used it. Mm, that will break will not happen. Miller. Yes, yes. All right, I'll be right over. Armed robbery. As I was saying, we aren't taking any chances. On Andrew's gun showing up and maybe getting into the wrong hands. I've asked to be called in all such cases. You come along if you want to. Your press pass will cover you. All right, I will. Wait here. Taking him in, but the hell is gone for me. It's an American service revolver, all right. In the glove compartment, you'll find the paper. Serial number on his gun? Read it. One four six eight seven four five two. Andrew's gun? Yes. We found it, comrade. We found it. This is all we need to complete our case. But then, Andrews is innocent and this man is guilty. But only we know that, comrade. Don't worry. Andrews will die if it's a crime. ready for questioning. Why don't you come along and see how I handle him? No, oh, I'd just as soon stay here if it's all the same to you. I'm sorry. I can't leave you here alone. It would look strange to my men. Your name, please. Hans Kohlmann. Occupation. <laughs> what does it look like? No levity. Now, Hans, it's a gun you used. I know where you got it. You don't know. Hamburg, wasn't it? Hamburg? Uh, yes, Hamburg. Two years ago. Uh, from a dealer. Who? I, I don't remember. When did you get to town here? This morning. This morning? You're sure it was this morning and not before? I'm positive. May I see your papers? I, I, I don't have them. I, I lost them. I see. Did you rob the stores this morning? Yes. Yes, I did. Are you ready to confess to that? Just that? Exactly. Draw out the papers. See, I told you it wouldn't give us any trouble. Trouble? He was so happy you forgot to mention the murder of that cab driver, he could have kissed you.
personally, I'm very grateful that Andrews is innocent. But it, it, it doesn't make matters any easier for us. Well, isn't there some way we can get the authorities on our side? Not without proof. What about Miller? We could have him watched. Herb, how can you tell the commandant of police that his top lieutenant is a commie? But Andrews' gun is in Mueller's office. Not anymore, I'll bet. There must be something we can do to help Andrews. There's only one way he can be completely cleared. Yeah? That's if Coleman confesses to the murder. Not a chance. Coleman's an old pro. Yes, but even old pros have nerves. I'm thinking of Mueller, too. You understand? Yeah. Okay, Herb, I'll stick as close to you as I can, just in case I can be helpful. how the people in town have been taking out what happened to me on the boys at the air base. Well, I guess that was to be expected. No, it wasn't. We were getting along fine with the local townsfolk. We liked them. They liked us. Well, a murder is a pretty big thing. Sure. And I was feeling sorry for myself. Now I find it's not only me that's taking it in the neck, it's the whole Air Force. Look, uh, you'll probably hear about this from your lawyer. A man was arrested for armed robbery. He was using an American service pistol. Was it mine? The police say no, but that's not the point. Could you recognize the man you saw fighting with the cab driver? Not from those monk books, I couldn't. No, I mean if you were to see him in person. I don't know. The man they arrested was medium build, very thin faced, middle aged. I got slugged so hard out. I'm not sure. Try. Did he have light hair? That's right. Maybe I could remember. Maybe I could. Uh, well, I just wanted to get your reactions. Thanks. No guard! Miller speaking. I've just been listening to a conversation in Andrew's cell. Our friend's been behaving in a very strange manner. I see. All right, continue to watch him until we see what he's trying to do. Then we'll take appropriate measures. How did you get permission to see me? I'm a journalist. I want a story. A robbery like I did is not the story. I'm not talking about robbery. I'm talking about murder. Whose murder? The murder of Peter Elner, the cab driver. You'd better get out of here. Now, wait a minute. Don't you think you better listen to what I've got to say? Well? What if I told you that evidence exists that you are the murderer? I murdered no one. Now, look, both you and I know you didn't get that pistol in Hamburg. You're wrong. Besides, the airman who's been arrested can identify you. He's coming to see you. Why should he? Because his lawyer at the air base heard about your arrest and insists on his client confronting you. You want something, don't you? Sure. I want a story. This case has become very political. That's no worry of mine. No? Well, it does worry the Americans. If you confess, the airbase commandant might intervene to save your neck. Guard? your attitude ever since you picked me up, Mueller. That's of no concern to me. I heard you and Andrew Stellan and Hans Coleman's. You're trick. Quiet, Mueller. Now, Philbrick, you said you're on your way over here. Why? Some acquaintances of mine at the airbase, people I knew back in the United States, told me that Andrew's lawyer had seen the story of Coleman's arrest. I was just looking at that myself. Why was this allowed to appear? I couldn't stop Sir Laporte at the station. 
Because they took it as a matter of routine. You should have stopped them. Started a whole series of bad breaks. Now Andrew's lawyer wants to investigate Coleman. He won't find out anything. I wanted to check. I went to see Andrews and prodded him to find out if he could recognize the real killer. He said yes. Then I went to see Coleman. I asked him if he'd talk on a promise of clemency. I think he will. You admit all this. I take credit for it. I found an extremely dangerous situation here. Call the station. Find out if Andrew's lawyer has made any trouble. Andrew's lawyer will have to move fast if they want to break Coleman down before Mueller gets to him. All right. It's true. Andrew's lawyer is asking that he see Hans Coleman. I've given orders he be refused. You were right. Thank you. My apologies. Hans Coleman must die. Exactly. I disagree. Don't tell us you're frightened. Of course I'm not frightened. I just don't want to see the party get in any deeper. Don't worry. There'll be no errors. Cell block nine. Miller speaking. So there have been some inquiries about the prisoner, Hans Coleman. In order to ensure his privacy, I want to make the following assignment changes. Shift uh, Fritz to 14. Eckhart to 5 and Lou to 12. Keep everyone away from Coleman's cell. That's all. It's all ready. All cells surrounding Coleman's will be vacant. But I need your help. Is this the way the party wants it? It is. Come on. Yes, I heard from your office. Come, come on, man. come on. Wake up. Come around. Quit him. He tried to kill me. But why? I don't know. Unless to silence me. I'll talk. I want to confess. I killed Peter Elner, the cab driver. Well, but what has this got to do with me? It won't be difficult to find out now. You, Philbrick, what were you doing down here? Trying to get a story from the prisoner. Well, you certainly got one. Going home? On the next plane. You're from Comrade Wanda. Yes, she, uh... She commended me on my far-sightedness. Andrews has been released, and the German police are putting together quite a file on Mueller. Uh, what about the air base? There won't be any trouble. The German people want that just as much as we do. Good for them. It gives you a nice feeling to know that our Air Force is standing between us and anybody that might feel like pushing us around. position of this free world airbase became even more secure than before. Next week, we'll bring you 
you another story from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick. The kind of story that could only be told by a man who for nine fantastic years served as a counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation.